Hi everyone, I'm Sonia Trivedi, Communications Manager here at Moodle, and we are at Moodle Mood Global 2023. Today, I had with me Robert Schrenk, Deputy Head of the Department for IT Services for Schools at the uh, Austrian Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research. Robert just presented a very interesting case study on the Austrian Federal educational portal and how Moodle has become part of the Austrian e-government strategy. Hi, Robert. How are you today? Hello. Very fine. Thanks. It's my first time at the Moodle Moot. Absolutely. Yeah. Great to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about the project and the role of Moodle in the whole e-government strategy? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, the project uh, uh, in this case, it was not about uh, making a learning platform. Um, it was about making an, a portal for every citizen that is uh, somehow connected to schools. Uh, so it's uh, for students and teachers and for their parents as well. And we also don't differentiate between different types of schools. So also private schools, public schools, they can all participate in this education portal. And uh, the main vision was uh, to reduce the, the amount of platforms that uh, people have to visit uh, to get the information they need for the next days, for example. Uh, so uh, we wanted to create a portal that collects all information from various applications that are used by the respective schools um, so that everybody has a personalized dashboard. And on the other hand, uh, to do so, we uh, implemented an educational technologies hub uh, that um, controls uh, which application can access data of which school or use interfaces on behalf of uh, which school. So we as a ministry, uh, we make contracts uh, with the uh, companies that pro uh, provide uh, those services um, and then the schools can decide which product they want to use and uh, the educational portal controls uh, all the exchange of data. And uh, the third tier is uh, that we also implement e-government services in this portal so that schools can, for example, make digitally signed uh, documents um, like uh, certificates uh, or something like that. And uh, we are also building an, an archive for those documents because in Austria they have to be kept for 60 years in certain cases. And so we want to um, put that uh, from the schools uh, to us because uh, schools would not be in a manner to store all those digital documents for such a long period of time. And uh, we're also implementing a dual delivery service. That means that uh, when schools make uh, a delivery of uh, digitally signed documents, they can be delivered digitally uh, when the people um, enrolled uh, to this kind of uh, delivery. And if not, then there is a fallback mechanism uh, to um, to deliver them physically. Um, and uh, we also uh, implemented uh, an, a digital ID card for students recently. So we released it in September, um, two weeks ago. And uh, these are also um, part projects of this educational portal. Really interesting. And it seems very vast, right? Uh, I'm curious to know a little bit more about the impact. You mentioned during your presentation that Moodle has a history on the Austrian market, right? I think since 2017, am I correct? Oh, no, it's uh, far, Even far. more? Yeah. Um, so the yeah. schools uh, started to use Moodle the first times uh, around uh, 2001 or two, And the uh, okay. ministry... Um, uh, recognized it. Uh, I think in 2004 uh, they said they would make an initiative to support schools in using Moodle and uh, then they built a system that was called Edu Moodle uh, and each school uh, had their own Moodle instance. And uh, we also had a Moodle community in Austria, so teachers that were interested in the topic and came together um, two or three times a year and discussing how Moodle could advance in Austria. And uh, there were some ideas that we implemented in this new individual platform that was also introduced by my colleagues. And uh, this platform was developed since 2017. And we switched uh, um, the platform where each school had a single instance uh, to this multi-tenant instance uh, where all schools are together in one Moodle. Okay, okay. And if you can share a little bit more about the results, you showed us some really good numbers, like how many students, how many schools are using that and that kind of thing. The education portal or the uh, learning platform? 
Uh, both. <laughs> okay. So um, in the learning platform, we have uh, about around uh, 1,100 schools, okay. which is uh, a fifth of all schools in Austria. Uh, and it's more the, the higher schools uh, that use it. Uh, so in numbers, I think it was uh, 400,000 users uh, that we have. Uh, and in Austria, we have um, above 1 million students in total. So it's a good number. And with the education portal, we just released it this summer and uh, we are now building everything up. So it's uh, an incremental advance. Uh, so currently there are not so many users, uh, but uh, it's an e-government service that every citizen can just activate for himself or herself. Uh, so I think it will grow in the next uh, months and years. Okay, great. And if you don't mind sharing with us, uh, what were the main reasons why you chose to work with Modo? Yeah, so I myself, um, I like Moodle because I was a teacher uh, before uh, I got IT manager and uh, I used Moodle as a teacher for more than a decade uh, and I was also part of this Moodle community. Uh, I just have so much experience with Moodle and not only me, myself, uh, it's also uh, our team, uh, the team in the ministry, the team at uh, the schools that we have, so everybody knows it. Uh, and we also have our network of developers uh, and technicians that uh, maintain the infrastructure. So when we say, okay, we make a new portal and we use Moodle, more or less everybody knows what, what we have to do. Uh, and we can start developing from the scratch uh, uh, without many efforts. And also in, with Moodle, you have so a good uh, technical documentation about the APIs and everything. So when a new company comes to us and uh, they have to develop for us a certain plugin with a certain functionality, and we just have to tell them, okay, you need to make it Moodle compatible. Here's the documentation for Moodle, how it works. Uh, please develop it that way. And then we also have our reviewers uh, to check if all the APIs uh, are fulfilled. And uh, that also um, makes the, the quality assurance easier. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing. And last, I would like to ask you uh, if you can share a little bit more about the next steps for the project and how do you see the platform evolving? Of course, all the things you can share about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, first of all, as I mentioned, it's a growing platform now. So yeah. we, we started uh, the base technology, the base interfaces for uh, those widgets that we integrate in the dashboard, for example. And now we have to, um, to get our partners to integrate the widgets um, because uh, now we only have the single sign-on and uh, only one or two partners already made such a widget. Uh, and the sense of the dashboard is that every uh, application has at least one widget in this education portal. So this is, um, I think, the most important next step because then also uh, all people that log in uh, to the education portal have more benefit from using it. And if the people are using it, then also the schools have more benefit when they make their deliveries, for example, digitally and sign documents uh, digitally. So, uh, yeah, it's a hand and egg uh, thing, you know. Uh, yeah, th these are the most important tasks in future. So much going on, right? Yeah. We should expect more updates from you in the near future. Hopefully. I'm sure. Thank you very much, Robert. I wish you a great time at Moodle Mode here. Thank you very much. And thank you for the interview. Thank you.